Hey, today I'm going to look at um, rational exponents. Now, the word rational has the word ratio in it. And if you cover up the NAL in it, you see ratio. Now, ratio, uh, ratios are fractions. And so when we write ratios, oftentimes we'll write fractions. And so um, what we're going to deal with is we're dealing with a rule that involves fractions and fractional exponents called rational exponents. Um, so here's a rule. If you happen to have a base um, with a fractional exponent, um, in this case, 1 over n, the rule is simply that n becomes the root, the nth root of the number to the first power. Um, if you have, say another uh, way to say this is if you happen to have a base to an m over n, the n becomes the root, um, and underneath there is b to the m. So the top number in the fraction is the power that the base has inside the radical sign. So um, it's, it's really pretty easy to use. So let's, let's check this out. Here I have an example. I have 5 to the 1 3rd power. And this is in radical notate, rational notation. And I want to put it into radical notation. Um, it's really pretty simple. I first of all make a radical sign. Because the bottom number of the fraction is 3, this becomes the cube root or the third root. And inside or underneath my radical sign, I put 5. And I would put 5 to the 1. Now, normally, you don't need to put a 1 um, above a whole number because it's implied that it would be 1. So, uh, but for this note, for this ex example, I wanted to make sure I show you that. Um, here's, here's another one here. I have 2 to the 3 fifths. Well, if I put this in a radical notation, this becomes the fifth root. So I use the radical sign and put the, the 5 right there, of 2 to the 3rd power. Now, some of you might know what 2 to the 3rd power is. 2 to the 3rd power is 8. So I could write this as this is the 5th root of 8. Um, now, over here, I have one more example. I have 15, a to the 2 thirds times b to the 1 third. Now, notice that the 15 doesn't have a, any fractional exponent. So when I write this in radical notation, um, I'm going to put the 15 on the outside of my expression or outside of my radical sign because it's going to be 15 times that. Now, both of these other two variables, a and b, they have a third root. So this would be a cube root, and it would simply be a to the second power and b to the first. Um, so I would end up with 15 times the cube root of a squared b. So that's going from a rational notation to a radical notation, or a fraction to a radical. Um, now, we want to, we're also going to have to go the other direction, so let's, let's do that. That's pretty simple as well. Um, if, I, if you look up here, I have a squared b cubed underneath the fourth root sign. So um, I'm just going to take these powers and put them over top of uh, 4. So this becomes a to the 2, two fourths times b to the 3 fourths. Now, 2 fourths is 1 half. So I could replace that with a to the 1 half. Um, so that's another way to, to write that. So yeah, go ahead and reduce those fractions. Um, here I have one that has a number. Um, 12 a squared b to the fifth and this we're gonna, this is all inside the cube root or the third root and so I would just rewrite this as 12 to the one third power a to the two thirds power and b to the five thirds power so it's it's really pretty simple to go from a radical notation to a rational notation um, just by putting whatever power it is over top of whatever root it happens to be um, now, in some, some instances, the number uh, might be a perfect uh, um, root, such as 16. 16, the fourth root of 16. In this example right here, I have the fourth root of 16. Um, well, that's equal to 2. And so if I take the fourth root of 16, I would just get 2. So in this example, I'm just going to replace 
that with too because it is a perfect group. Also, um, I have three fourths here by my A, and here I have B to the sixth underneath there, so I'd have B to the sixth fourths, and six fourths is three over two, so I should go ahead and reduce that to three over two. Um, so I would end up with two A to the three fourths, B to the three halves. So um, now, with rational exponents, you can perform other other operations that we used to do um, with just exponents that weren't fractions um, or rational numbers. And so I have some examples like that over here. I'm going to move this a little bit. But um, here I have uh, x to the four-fifths times x to the two-thirds. Now, the rule is when you multiply like bases, you add your exponents. So I know I'm going to have x but I have to add four-fifths plus two-thirds. And if you remember that when you add fractions, you need a common denominator. So if I look at the three and the five, I know my, my common denominator is going to be uh, 15. So I'd have to multiply top and bottom of this one by three to get 15, top and bottom of that one by five. So I would end up with 12 fifteenths plus 10 fifteenths. And if I add 12 and 10, I'll get 22. So this becomes x to the 22 fifteenths. Um, <clears throat> if you have a situation where you have a power on the inside, a power on the outside, that rule was we multiply the power. So I'm going to take my x and I'm going to take 2 thirds times 1 fifth. Because I have x to the 2 thirds all raised to the 1 fifth power. So when I multiply fractions, I multiply across the top and across the bottom. And so this would just become um, x to the 2 tenths, which I would simplify, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, x to the 2 fifteenths. Um, if I could simplify that, I would. Um, the last little example I'm going to show you is what happens if you have a situation where you're uh, dividing like bases. Well, then you would subtract. And so I would take x to the one half minus one third, and one half and one third. If I subtract those, I have three six minus two six, and I would end up with x to the one six. So um, all the all the properties that we did before using um, exponents still apply if we happen to have fractions or rational exponents. Um, I hope that this. Um, the rule is as easy for you to use, and I hope you can complete your assignments with it. So, all right, thanks for stopping in.